Hey, it's Rake. No fancy tutorial today. I just want to update you on what's going on at Guided Hacking. But first, I want to recommend a few people. If you don't know Live Overflow, he's awesome. He's had a huge impact on our channel recently. Uh, so big thank you to him. Please check out his videos. Cheat the Game has been a huge supporter for many years. Uh, if you're into the cheat engine scene, he's got some of the best videos. Next up, Steven Chapman has also been a good friend uh, for many years of Guided Hacking. He's always supported us, and he's got a lot of cool videos covering new games, um, which you might find interesting. And then last, we have Chris D. Vlad. He made a couple of videos on uh, penetration testing for our channel. He just recently uh, broke into InfoSec, and he's got a lot of videos on what it's like uh becoming a penetration tester getting different certs and you know what you need to get prepared for if you're getting into that scene now what's going on at guided hacking well i've recently lost my mind and i went back through the forum and i read every single post and i answered every single question we have just like stack overflow we have a question and answer system where you can upvote downvote and select best answer i've gone through and i've answered over 2,000 questions and in doing so i was able to figure out a lot of different just things about like insights into how the form works. One thing I put a huge emphasis on over the years is trying to identify all the common issues that people have where people get stuck and trying to form solutions to those by providing resources which explain those things. That's really been my goal since day one. And what I've discovered with this is that 85% of all the questions are answered by doing the start here guide. I'm just going to go through all these uh, links I've got open here of all this new shit that's happened recently. So, Guided Hacking Offset Dumper. If you if you know what Haze Dumper is, it's written in Rust, and it's an offset dumper uh, for CSGO. It can dump offsets for any game as long as you write the config file. So, I was actually messing around with this in Rust, and I got real annoyed at Rust at one point. I said, I'm just going to remake this in C++, which is what I ended up doing. I actually had a really hard time with um, with the net vars. Um, it took me like a week to code this stupid thing, but I, I did finish it. It dumps all the net vars and all the offsets. It uses the same uh, config file format that Haze Dumper does. There's no reason to have two different ones, you know? So they're interchangeable, and you can make your own, basically, and it will work for any game. Uh, I'm working on making it work with uh, all Source Engine games in the future. I will do that. Uh, one benefit that our Offset Dumper has that Haste Dumper doesn't have is it currently uh, it also dumps Cheat Engine tables. I'm looking to 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 do more on this. This is only this is version 0 0.7, so I'm not even at the official 1.0 yet. Uh, we have a new section for cheat engine tables. I know sites like uh, Fearless Revolution, they have like a million cheat engine tables. And I thought maybe we could do something like that on GH. There's only 10 in here right now, but hey, it's a start. So if you got any tables laying around, come on by and dump them here. I've written a bunch of guides the past couple months. A guide to learning Python game hacking. I suck at Python, but I was able to take all of our resources uh, on the forum and all the good resources out online. Christy Vlad gave me some suggestions on to post in here. So if you're into Python game hacking, or maybe you're just getting started, you can pop over here and get an idea of what kind of resources we have available and recommend. I just wrote this thing, stop pa pasting, focus on the basics. We, we really do have a lot of people who, they're just immature and they, they think that they can everyone wants something for nothing right people want hacks but they don't want to do the work to learn game hacking it's just a constant problem in in the game hacking community and it's getting really annoying lately to be honest with you so anyway i just wrote this thing called the baster's dilemma to try to explain to people you know a lot of people are young and maybe there's there's some other way i can get through to them because no matter how many times you say it unless nobody listens I uh, we had a old external pattern scan tutorial which wasn't actually that good so i put together a full guide on external and internal pattern scanning explains everything from beginning to end about wild cards masks how to only scan good memory uh scan the module address range not the entire process and i've got all my little code here that i've posted over the years all in one central location with everything that you need to know universal pattern scan uh pattern signature parser next up momda wrote this huge guide about uh, packets recently let me open this up first this is actually really cool he went through and uh, he reverse engineered and decrypted the packets huge tutorial from him he's got a tool that he released along with this and then i went ahead and made like a master guide 
of everything that we have about packets on the forum. Uh, Timber's got a few posts from Game Freakers and kind of just like an overall representation of, of everything you need to know and all the tools and resources that are available. So if you're into packets, jump over there. Then we have, uh, I wrote just a quick guide about hacking non-native games because when you when you hack a game that's not made with a big fancy engine, they're, they're easy to hack. There's no, there's no like multiple layers of abstraction with everything. We get a lot of people asking us how to hack Java games, how to hack Universal Windows Platform, uh, Unity, uh, Unreal Engine. These things are just not good for learning game hacking because they're just too complicated. You need, you need specific skill sets that are tailored to those engines. And so just if you're learning, you have to just stop, don't touch these games and focus on learning on native games, which is what I stress here. Um, for instance, like if you try to hack a Java game and you barely know how to code, it's not going to be fun at all. It's, it's going to be torture. You're going to feel like an idiot. I even feel like an idiot still to this day. I touched a Java game a couple of weeks ago. It's horrible. <laughs> the second I see Java, I'm done. But uh, not because Java is a horrible language, which some of you may have opinions about that, but just because any game that, that runs in a virtual machine, right, an interpreted language, is just going to be a nightmare. We also have a big Unity game hacking guide I wrote a while ago. In uh, my quest to make the offset dumper, I had to get the net vars, which drove me actually insane for about a week. Um, but there's, a, there's this function called get all classes. Um, and that function, when you call it, it gives you the address of the linked list, which contains all the client classes and then subsequently the net bars. And so I wrote a little guide on how you can uh, find those, the structures. These are just from the CSGO SDK from Source Engine, right? And um, how to use it, how to find it in IDA. It's actually pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Although this screenshot doesn't make it look easy at all, does it? All right, next, I wrote a guide on how to find the bone matrix. You know, the, the way you have to approach everything is, you know, how would I find this? How would I do this if there were no resources? Everyone's looking like, where's the code? Where's the tutorial? Well, sometimes you just have to figure out yourself. Like, that's reality. And that's how I approach all problems because as the owner of Guide Attacking, my goal is to be able to teach everyone everything that they want to learn. So how do, how would I find the bone matrix? Well, you have to ask yourself, what is a bone matrix? Well, it's a bunch. It's a structure that defines all the bones in your body. Okay, so what's a bone? Well, a bone is basically a line. There's two points that are connected by a line. So how would you find this big structure? Like, it sounds like it's going to be really complicated, but it's not. It's easy, right? You you probably know the origin position of your body, and your head is above your body, and your head has a head bone, right? So how do you find the bone? Search for uh, floats that are a little bit larger than your body, but not too large. So you're basically, you're finding all 3D vector coordinates, okay, that are within a range of between your body and a little bit above your body. And you so you're scanning for the Z value, the vertical, right? And you, you're gonna find a bunch of shit, probably, you're probably gonna find all the bones when you start filtering down that list, but the but the one with the highest Z value is guaranteed to be guaranteed to be your head every time, right? If it's if it's a thousand feet away and a thousand feet above your head, it's definitely not your head bone. So it's really easy to filter down. Once you find that uh, head bone, you can easily trace backwards to the rest of the structure and then reverse engineer it. Everything there that you need to get started, right? Boom, easy. Um, I wrote a little source code, nothing special, but a direct 3D9 end scene hook template using the dummy device method. Brohan shared his dummy device method for getting the direct 3D device, which is the most superior method to use ever. And this is a really easy source code. You can download this, compile it, and inject it into any 32-bit direct 3D9 game, and it will display something on the screen. Um, so you can build upon this and do, really do whatever you want after that. If, if, you can, if you're noticing a trend, every tutorial I write, every guide I make, every thread I make, every source code I release, it's all to answer questions. I basically, I want to have a tutorial that answers every question because I like answering questions, but I don't like answering stupid questions. So 
my goal here is to never have to answer a stupid question again. So in that effort, how to find position coordinates. Sounds easy, right? Well, I've made it seem much more complicated than this by <laughs> by going really, taking this to like the nth degree. Like if you follow this and you still can't find it, ah, you're lost. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Also, uh, image, uh, how do you even pronounce image UI? I guess that's how you pronounce it. Uh, it's like the most popular graphics framework on the planet. People use this uh, library because they don't actually want to learn direct 3D or anything like that. It's actually really cool, but we get so many stupid questions about it. So I finally wrote a guide. If like everything's here, one, the most important thing to realize is that on the GitHub, they have example code for every single type of graphics library, DirectX 9, 10, 11, OpenGL, of Vulkan, literally everything they have examples and they're they're very easy to compile so anyway that's that guide uh just released a simple x86 uh trampoline hook we actually didn't have a trampoline hook function posted on the forum uh we only had a detour so anyway here's that trampoline hook i recently been, been playing with c sharp i'm definitely not very good with it but i made a little baby memory class here it has find dma addy git module base address and it has an example on how to find the process open it get the module base address and calculate the pointers it's basically everything you need to get started if you're if you're getting into c sharp also found uh, in trying to increase the number of C Sharp resources we have, Traxon uh, had a pattern scan function he wrote, and so I shared that out here. Again, more simple crap, simple DLL injector source code. This is like the bare bones, right? This is basically just virtual allocate, right? Process memory and create remote thread. It's as basic as you get as you can get. Again, this is not a source code that we had, so I put it together and dropped it in here. Actually, I'm lying. Mom totally wrote this, and I just changed it a little bit. <laughs> anyway, uh, how to patch a file. Uh, another question we get fairly often. Uh, it's actually really easy. Here's just a little example of creating a test file and uh, writing some bytes to it and then saving it. It's really quite easy. List of guided hacking guides. All of my big guides, they're meant to be like jumping off points for all the other resources we have. So like, for instance, like the IDA Pro beginner guide is gonna have links to all of our IDA tutorials, all of our IDA source codes, etc. So this is really like one-stop shopping. So if you're coming to the forum and you say, I wanna make an ESP, just go here, click guides, list all, ES list all guides, and then scroll down and boom, you got an ESP overview. Click that and then everything you need is right there. The goal is to have everything as easy to find as possible. I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, next, this is so stupid, but again, it has to be done. How to ask questions and receive good answers. It's like simple stuff, guys. If you can't even make a post and explain what you want, we can't help you. What else we got? Snow Hat. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, so Snow Hat is an upcoming uh, bug bounty program for video games. I'm actually really excited about this. So it's I think it's the first of its kind. It's a bug bounty only for video games. And no, you're not going to make an aimbot. You're not going to get paid to make aimbots and shit, okay? You, you actually have to hack the game. Like, they're talking about, you know, there's a lot of mobile games. There's a lot of console games, um, browser games, and... You know, a lot of these games have uh, in-game currencies and stuff like that, and the stores where people are in-app purchases, right? So if people are able to exploit that, then it really hurts those games uh, financially. So I think a lot of these bug bounties are going to revolve around that, but I think there's going to be some anti-cheat stuff in there and other stuff, you know? So this is going to be really cool. They got a slick looking website. I've actually been talking to them for about a year, so... It'd be really interesting to see where this go. I think it's I think it's gonna be big. Um, I'm excited about this. Maybe I can make some money. We recently had to ban PUBG and Fortnite from the forum because there's too many idiots. That's exciting, right? Uh, Gary's mod, uh, Lua enable bypass. If you're into that kind of thing, uh, tutorial on how to use uh, be spotted by mask for CS:GO. How to find view angles. Again, a really simple thing that people fail at. 
time and time again and we have to answer these questions so this guide based look at how many different use cases i've provided right this if you if you can't get it after this just quit next up how to find and define structs in ida pro from raylands and deco just posted a c sharp dll loader basically just uh, embeds your DLL in executable and then it and then it can inject it with, with a bunch of different modifiable settings. All right, if you guys don't know, Timber from Game Freakers is now moved over to guided hacking 100%. He's got a ton of really cool tutorials. He does a lot more interesting and like weird and different stuff than what I do. I'm, I'm just focused on helping people to learn game hacking. He does a lot cooler, more interesting stuff. Uh, just a few things recently. Uh, hooking direct input to emulate, emulate key presses. This was really uh, cool. Uh, a little tutorial on using MASM. DLL injection without write process memory. This is kind of just like a random thought he had the other day. Uh, where you have to use write process memory when you're injecting to, to put the path of your DLL into the target process. Now, what he does in this example is... He starts the program by passing the path of the DLL as a command line argument, and that just sits in memory in a buffer somewhere, right? And then he he does the normal create rem uh, remote thread, but he gets the string um, that he passed on the command line argument, and then you don't have to use write process memory. Is this going to bypass any detections? Probably not, but it's just a cool idea of what you can do without using write process memory. Also, no uh, virtual allocate. Just cause he defeats uh, debugger attach guards, latest uh, Steam debug type of thing in there, and he just made this is the coolest progress he's actually done. It's a machine learning bot for Mortal Kombat, and it's pretty good. He's been working on it for like a week or two, I think, and it wins like seventy percent of the time. I think is the latest. It basically is just injecting random keystrokes, and then if it does damage or does not receive damage, then that's then the machine learning says that's a good thing. Continue to do those things, right? And if you do get damaged, then you don't want to do that move. And so he's got to pipe some more input into it, but this is going to be really freaking cool. Check that out. If you check out one thing from this video, check that out. And the very last thing is I recently wrote a rap. <laughs> so we steal them chains and them gold rings. Match file with the pings because we hack in all the things. Import tables and the strings. So if you're into that kind of thing, you can check that out too. Anyways, that's all that's going on right now. Uh, we have new videos coming out like every week for the next month. So stay tuned. Peace.